All right, time to jump into something that sounds, well, kind of dry, but trust me, it's fascinating. We're doing a deep dive today on WFM metrics. Yeah, these metrics, they're like, uh, you know, a secret window into how those really slick contact centers operate. You know the ones I mean? Yeah. Where everything's running smoothly, customers are happy. Right. It's like we're going behind the scenes to figure out what makes them tick. And we're going to break it all down in a way that's easy to understand. So let's kick things off with chat concurrency. Now, I've heard this term thrown around, but to be honest, I'm not entirely sure I get it. Can you explain it like I'm five? Okay, so um, imagine you're an agent, right? And yes. you've got like three, maybe four chats popping up at the same time. Chat concurrency tells us how many of those you can juggle, you know, effective, like w without dropping the ball. Okay, so it's not just about having a bunch of chats open. It's about how well you can actually handle them all at once. Exactly. And, and there's a formula for it, too. You take the total chat time, like the entire time spent on all of the chats, and divide that by the total engaged time engaged time yeah like the time the agents actively working on those chats it excludes you know breaks and stuff gotcha makes sense so let's say an agent's juggling a bunch of complicated chats at once like troubleshooting tech issues mm. answering billing questions yeah that must be like peak multitasking mode i would totally and and that's where things can get tricky you know if an agent's overwhelmed the quality of their responses might like take a hit Plus, customers might end up waiting longer, and nobody wants that. No, definitely not. So finding that sweet spot for concurrency is super important, right? Like where agents are challenged but not drowning in chats. Absolutely. It's about striking that balance. All right. Let's shift gears a bit and talk about call volume metrics. Mm. These are all about analyzing, you know, the number of calls coming in, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like the flow of calls. Right. So there are a couple of key metrics here. One is volume percent. Offer to forecast, mm -hmm. and the other is handled to forecast percent. Can you break those down for us? Sure. So, um, volume percent offer to forecast is basically looking at how good our predictions were. Like, how many calls did we think we'd get versus how many actually rolled in? Okay. So, it's like checking if our crystal ball is working. Yeah. Haha. <laughs> exactly. And then, uh, handled to forecast percent, that shows us, well, out of all the calls we predicted, how many did we actually answer? I see, I see. So let's say our handled to forecast percent is always lower than the volume percent offered to forecast. Does that mean like maybe we need more people on the phones, more agents? Bingo. It could be a sign that we're a bit understaffed or maybe there's like a bottleneck somewhere in how we route calls. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Now let's move on to call handling metrics, which sounds like it's all about well, how we actually deal with those calls. Exactly. And and this is where we really start to see the impact on the customer experience. Right. So tell me about the abandonment rate. What is that exactly? And, and more importantly, how can we keep it low? So the abandonment rate, it tells us how many calls, like what percentage of calls just get, you know, abandoned before they ever reach a real live agent. Yikes. So that's people giving up before they even get help. Right. And that's a bad sign. Right. It might be, uh, you know, maybe the wait times are too long or the IVR, <laughs> you know, those automated menus, maybe they're just too confusing. Yeah, those can be a nightmare sometimes. Totally. So to bring that abandonment rate down, we could look at like, streamlining the IVR, maybe offer a callback option, and of course, making sure we have enough agents available so people don't have to wait forever. Right. Staffing is key. Yeah. Now, what about offered to handle percent? Mm -hmm. How is that different from the abandonment rate? They both seem to deal with, like, whether calls get answered. They do, yeah. But um, offer to handle percent is more about efficiency. It's like, out of all the calls that come in, what percentage do we actually pick up? Not how many we miss, but how well we handle what we get, you know? Ah, okay, so it's like two sides of the same coin. Yeah. Got it. Now let's dive into call time metrics. This sounds like where we get into the nitty gritty of agent efficiency. It is, yeah. One big one here is average handle time, or AHT. It, it's basically the average time an agent spends on each call from, you know, hello to goodbye. Okay, so the shorter the AHT, the more efficient the agent, right? Yeah, in general, that's true. But uh, we got to be careful, right? Because sometimes a high AHT it doesn't mean the agent's slow or anything. It might be that the systems are clunky or they don't have the right info at their fingertips. Right, like if they're spending ages searching for customer data or trying to navigate a complicated knowledge base. Exactly. It could be a symptom of bigger problems, not just the agent themselves. So AHT is kind of like a clue, a signal that something might need to be tweaked. Now, there's another metric here that seems pretty basic, but you're saying it can have a surprisingly big impact, and that's line adherence. 
Yeah, it's like, how well do agents stick to their schedule? Are they taking breaks when they're supposed to? Are they logging in and out on time? It sounds kind of, well, like micromanaging. I know, it sounds kind of basic, but even small deviations can mess things up. You know, if enough agents are even a few minutes off, it can affect service levels, make wait times longer, and all that. Okay, I'm starting to see the bigger picture here. But, you know, for someone who's not a contact center manager, why should they care about all these metrics? What's the takeaway for our listeners? Well, think about it like this. These metrics, they paint a picture of how the whole contact center is running. Are agents happy and productive? Are customers getting quick, helpful service? So by keeping an eye on these numbers, businesses can like spot problems before they become huge headaches. Mm -hmm. And they can make things better for both customers and agents, right? Absolutely. It's about using data to make smart decisions, you know, huh. optimizing things, streamlining processes, all that good stuff. So it's not just about crunching numbers for the sake of it. It's about using those numbers to tell a story yeah. and actually drive positive change. Exactly. That's right. There's always more to learn. So keep exploring, keep asking questions, and keep striving for those awesome customer experiences. And efficient operations, of course. Of course. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive, and we'll catch you next time.